Hey everybody, if I was to ask you what is the most important thing to know about truck driving, I would probably get a thousand different answers. Well, I'd probably get five different answers because there's not a lot of people watching this channel, but <clears throat> I'd probably get several different answers. So I'm going to break it down for you today. The number one thing to know about truck driving when you're driving these trucks and when you're jerking these trailers around across country the number one thing to know is how to make that sucker stop make it stop okay because as long as that truck isn't moving it's not going to hurt anybody it's just like like a firearm you can load that firearm fully loaded chamber around uh, take it off safety and set it on the table and for a thousand years it's not going to hurt anybody but pick it up and move that trigger and it becomes a dangerous item it's the same thing with these trucks as long as they're sitting still they're not going to hurt anybody but put that thing in motion forward backwards sideways at any speed and it becomes a dangerous thing you could run somebody's toe over or whatever the case it is okay so, hands down, the most important thing to know about operating this equipment is how to make that thing stop. Every single time I have a youngster in my truck, the very first thing we go over are the brakes. I want to make sure that young driver knows how to adjust the brakes and knows how to inspect the brakes to ensure that the brakes are going to work properly okay today we're not going to go over adjusting the brakes uh, that can be another video if you guys want it you can adjust self adjusting slack adjusters from your driver's seat okay um, and you can get underneath that thing and you know put wrenches on it or whatever you're going to do we, we can go over that in another video if you're really interested in it but for right now, in this video, I want to talk about three very small components of that braking system that you should be looking for every single time you get out on the road. Trucks, trailers, these three components should be there. And they're super tiny, super important. What we want to know before we put that thing into gear and before we can you know, run down the highway without grinding gears or whatever the case it is. Before we do anything, we need to know how to make it stop. That is the most important thing to know when we're truck drivers. All right, so I'm gonna shoot another couple videos here um, and maybe we're gonna get through this thing. All right. These two parts right here, these two pieces, are two of the smallest pieces on your truck and trailer, and two of the most important parts on your truck and trailer. And you can see it already on that notebook paper, but look at that. That's the size of these things, and they're incredibly important. Without these two pieces, your brakes not might, might they might not work. Your brakes not, might not work. So, let's take a look at how they go together, and how important they are to our braking system. Set the camera up right there. Here's your clevis pin. The clevis pin is pretty much just an unthreaded bolt with a hole right there in the end of it. And all we do is set is push this split pin right here through that hole. And then we 
bend that split pin all the way down. So now it looks like that. Okay. That's your clevis pin and cotter pin. Your clevis pin and your cotter pin right here. Without those two pins, your brakes will not work. All right, this is a this is a snap ring right here. I have it on my wallet chain. But doesn't make it any less of a snap ring. The snap ring came off of a Peterbilt uh, when I was changing a slack adjuster. Had to replace a slack adjuster. And this is an old snap ring. Uh, if you disregard the wallet chain right here, and of course my wallet, you can see what the snap ring looks like. It's basically just a washer with these two signature holes in it right here. You'll see that at the very top of your slack adjuster where the slack adjuster slips onto the S-cam. And a lot of times it's going to be covered up with grease and dirt and grime and all of that other stuff. You may have to wipe that off when you're doing your pre-trip inspection to make sure that that snap ring is actually on there but it is incredibly important that that snap ring is on your S cam at your slack adjuster and you can see how small it is it's not very big it spans one knuckle on my finger but it's incredibly important and without that your slack adjuster might just come right off of that S-cam. And if that happens, if your slack adjuster comes off of your S-cam, um, that brake isn't going to work. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, again, you have to decide how important that is. And, um, you know, if the, if the DOT cop sees that you don't have a snap ring on your slack adjuster at your s cam he could shut you down i mean that's best case scenario worst case scenario is that that brake doesn't work and you know your brake isn't working for crying out loud <laughs> pretty important that your brake works right Okay, so here's a picture of an air chamber, or air can, or whatever you want to call it. And what we want to focus on when we're looking for these small brake pins is right up here in the top left corner. Uh, this is going to be your first pin. That's your, your clevis pin. And then this right here. That's going to be your cotter pin, your split pin. Okay? So, uh, this part right here, at the end of your push rod, that's going to go onto the bottom of your slack adjuster. Okay? Your slack adjuster is going to be right in here in this space right there. Then, you're going to put your clevis pin into there. And then make sure that your split pin is in there, your cotter pin, okay? Without those two pins, your brakes will not work at that end of that axle. That brake pod is not going to work, okay? So we're looking for this pin here and this pin here. That's it. Very, very small parts, very easy to see 
if we're looking for them during our pre-trip inspections. And if we're not looking for them, believe it or not, you could be missing either this pin or that pin or both. Okay? Incidentally, if you're missing this pin right here, there's a very good chance that you're missing this pin right there. Also, if you're missing this pin right here, I guarantee you're missing that pin. Because this pin right here is the only thing keeping this pin into place. So make sure they're both in there. Every single time, every single time you pick up a new trailer, every single time you do your pre-trip inspection, you're making sure that this pin and this pin are in place on every single set of brakes you have. That's it. There's your brakes. There's your brake pins. Vitally important. Okay, so this is an image of a slack adjuster uh, where the push rod comes into connection with the slack adjuster itself. This looks like an automatic slack adjuster. Um, well, yep, I guess it is an automatic slack adjuster. The tool at the bottom apparently says automatic right there. So, <laughs> didn't notice that before anyways what we're going to be looking at is this part specifically that part right there is the very end of your push rod where it connects to the slack adjuster where the push rod of your air uh, air chamber connects to the push rod okay so what we want to focus on when we're doing pre-trip inspections is um, that clevis pin and split pin right there some of some of your slack adjusters are going to have two clevis pins and two split pins one two right there some of them aren't going to connect right here at the boot okay this is your boot right there some of them aren't going to connect right there. This is an automatic slack adjuster, so we have two connections. One, two. Okay. Um, so, basically, bottom line is, when you're doing your pre-trip inspection, and you get down underneath that trailer, you get down underneath that truck, you're looking to make sure that your air chambers the uh, push rods specifically are connected to this slack adjuster with that clevis pin and split pin. Clevis pin and split pin. Okay, very important. You've already seen how small those parts are. You got to get down there, put fingerprints on them, put a flashlight on them, make sure they're there because if they're not, the implications are enormous. That brake doesn't work. You need to make sure those parts are there. Okay, here we go. All right, so here's your here's your air can right here. Your uh, brake chamber, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Here's your push rod. It comes out right here. When these are brand new, this push rod will stick out to like right there, and you got to cut it off with a hacksaw or a sawzall or whatever. But none of that's important. So what happens when you press that brake pedal? This push rod is going to throw out here. Okay, that's linear motion. It it attaches right here at this clevis pin, and the cotter pin holds the clevis pin into place. Okay, that's important that this cotter or that this clevis pin and this cotter pin is in place on all of your connections here. Every single push rod to every single slack adjuster. That's important. 
because these are two different parts, okay? So they have to be connected. If you're missing a clevis pin, if you're missing a cotter pin, you may not have brakes mm. at this end of this axle, okay? Because what's gonna happen is, uh, now this is an older style uh, slack adjuster, but what will happen is this, all things working correctly, this push rod comes out linear motion. Remember rack and pinion, mm -hmm. linear motion here. What that does is that pushes the bottom of this slack adjuster this way. And now you've got linear motion causing rotational motion. That's why we just went over that rack and pinion a few minutes ago, okay? Now, up here, this is where your slack adjuster attaches to your S-cam. This is your S-cam, runs all the way back into your brake drum, okay? Right up in here, this is important too. It's something to look at. I'm gonna to try to get closer to the camera here, or closer in the camera. You can see this part right here, mm -hmm. these two holes. Yep. That's called a snap ring. I'll give you a better idea of what it looks like. Here's my wallet chain. That's a snap. This is a snap ring right there, mm -hmm. okay? That's actually a snap ring off of Peterbilt right there. I've got it on my wallet chain now. But anyways, that's important because at the end of this at the end of this S cam right here, this S cam it comes out right here. This is this is the very end of that S cam. At the end of it, there's a bunch of splines. And when you go to change your slack adjuster, you got to know how many splines are on your S cam and all that other shit. But it doesn't matter. You're not changing fucking you're not working on trucks. But inside here, this is all kind of funky and rusted and dirty and everything else, but there's gonna be some spacers, you know, washers mm -hmm. to take up space. But that right there, that um, snap ring, that needs to be in place because that holds this slack adjuster onto that S-cam, yeah. okay? It's not likely to fall off because it's connected down here but you still, I mean, it's a good idea to have that part on there. Mm -hmm. These are very small parts. I mean, look at, look at how big that, that snap ring is right there. Yeah. It's not, it's not very big. It's, it's like a large washer, right? Yeah. So look for the, look for those signature holes right there. Those signature holes right there. That's your snap ring. And that's in place. That means that it, that uh, slack adjuster is is onto that S cam really well. I mean, you know, the way it's designed to be. Mm -hmm. So again, you've got your push rod that comes out um, when you apply the brakes, the brake pedal that pushes your S cam down, which rotates this S cam. You're taking linear motion this way with your push rod affecting rotational motion this way, which spins that S cam. And then you can't see it inside here. Um, I can see it because I know what I'm looking for, but um, I can see the actual S cam in there. And what that S cam does is um, it will rotate and it spreads your, uh, your brake shoes apart yeah. to where they now contact that brake drum causing the friction and stopping the vehicle or lighting that motherfucker on fire if you're coming down cabbage too fast. <laughs> All right, so that's it. That's it. That's why we went over that uh, rack and pinion concept before we got up underneath this motherfucker at 30 degrees. All right, so does that make sense? Yeah. The important thing is that when you get up underneath these trailers, when you're doing your job, like you're the only one inspecting these trailers, mm -hmm. you're looking for these little pieces like this. Get up in here and make sure that, make sure that snap ring is in. And it's every single set, every single brake set. You're looking for small things like that, okay? So, that's it. So that's pretty much it. Uh, purpose of this video here is to just show you those three very very important components 
on your truck and your trailers. Um, as I said before, they're three of the smallest pieces. And um, one of them, that snap ring, is pretty much always coated in grease and grime and cuss words and everything else. You may not be able to see it, but, you know, the purpose of this video is to show you where it's at. And, you know, you may need to wipe it off and uh, make sure it's there. Um, as far as the compressed air system, that's a whole nother thing. Uh, you know, checking for leaks and all that other stuff. Um, you know, making sure your brakes are adjusted properly. That's a whole nother video. Don't know if I'll shoot that video or not. Um, if you guys want to know how to adjust your brakes, you know, there's probably a thousand other videos online. Uh, YouTube or whatever on how to adjust your brakes. Um, if you're really, really interested in it, uh, let me know, I guess, in the comments or something. Um, or you can, like, message me through Instagram or something like that. I'm not for sure how any of that stuff works. Uh, you guys are probably more hip to it than I am. Uh, get at me on some app or whatever. Uh and let me know and I'll do a video on that and I'm not great at shooting videos uh, but I'll do my best and uh, you know my heart says to put my phone number out there and uh, let you guys call me up or whatever if you have a question or need some help or whatever uh, other guys are telling me don't do that you know don't put your phone number out there or whatever I don't get it um, so anyways for right now I'm not gonna do that uh, but anyways, these three components, these three smallest components on your truck and trailer, some of the most important stuff you can look for when you're doing pre-trim inspections. And um, hopefully this video showed you where they're at. Uh, and hopefully you'll start looking for them. You know, make sure you're your brake pins are in there. Make sure that S cam is in there and uh, make sure that you can do the most important thing as a truck driver. What's the most important thing as a truck driver? Stop that truck. The most important thing about being a truck driver is knowing that your brakes work. Have a blast guys.